George, very impressive demonstration here we've got going on this Hardinge Bridgeport V710 using your Goering cutters. What cutters are you using? This is the four flute diver, article number 6737. And it's moving at a fair, it's cutting at a fair old uh, lick, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's cutting faster than any standard four flute ML would ever cut, I think. Um, as you can see and hear from the swarf bouncing off the cabin door, it's, it's moving fairly fairly quickish. When, when, when engineers watch this, um, how many of them do you think will be machining at similar feeds and speeds as to what you're going to tell me in a minute? I would say very few. Um, a lot of them would, wouldn't be overly familiar with the technology because they're probably still using standard four-field tools, but it's not only about the tool that's used, it's about the way it's applied to the application itself as well, the machine and parameters, the cutting strategies as well. Okay, g give me one of the highlights of this machining demonstration. The interpolation, maybe, or what, what, t tell me, tell me, yes, one of the highlights. Well, we've a few here that we can talk about. We've the circular interpolation, so we're with the 12 mil tool, we're running 12 mil deep. We're a 1.75 uh, millimeter step over, and we are running at 6,000 RPM. Sorry, 6,000 feed rate and 6,600 RPM. Um, we're also drilling in at 90 degrees, which very few people can do with a four flu ML. So we're basically just moving in the z-axis in a minus direction. So for that, we're running on about 6,600 and a feed of about 850 mil a minute. Really? What's you just down like that? Literally straight plunge into the material. Yeah. Just repeat that the feed, the speed that you're doing that. We're running at about 6,600 and a feed of about 860 millimeters a minute uh, with a 12 mil tool at 90 degrees into the material. How many uh, of those can it do with it before it's worn out? I would say how long is a piece of string, but we've ne I've never actually measured it myself. But the tool wear, I mean, that's going to be a burning question, isn't it? Yeah, great, great running at that, that speeds and feeds. But if, if, if I need to change the tool every every part, then it's a bit, um, yeah, it's not very effective. Uh, tool wear, no, it's, it, because of the design of the tool and because of the unique design of the of the end cutting feature on the tool, it is actually it wears quite well. You know, I, I know. It, I mean, I'm I'm. I'm being tongue in cheek really because I know yeah. talking to your customers it is a very very durable tool. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you make it durable? What's the secret? Um, a lot of us in the actual grind itself and the, the, the correction, the lip correction of the tool, it's in the coating, the new sedum coating which is approximately five to six thousand Vickers hardness and um, it's harder than our fire coating, um, it's harder than our titanium aluminium nitride coating and again the flue profile of the tool itself. If you had a competition, if going out a competition here with some other leading cutting tool manufacturers, same machine, same program, same material, who who's just going to cut it faster? Are you are you right up there? Are you going to win? Are you going to win that race? Hands down. 